come with me in an understanding and we need it to be God's understanding not mine well mine and yours because it's God's look we all exist and it's in the mind of God that is our true existence it all seems very separate here and it's been separate for a good reason that we be free as I've said probably too many times now but you've got it haven't you that we can experience what we think we value and find out the truth of the matter and thereby move towards what we truly value what is of true value and what is of true value to have the unlimited wonderfulness of God who loves us and cares cares for us all all life now we don't in most of our existence here have that persuasion that conviction that reality is not real to us we live in a, an apparent reality of separateness and the absence of God for a very good reason that we come to realize with all our hearts that his presence and reality is everything everything to us in our visualized separateness we quite simply long for him but everything to us in a, in his reality which is to know who we are and what we are and to know in our very being then that what he knows that our existence is because of his thoughts we are thought or we are manifesting as thought but we are part of his being integral part of his being we only exist because he holds and values us values us in his mind it's not that if he didn't we would be alone and wandering in some existence we would have no existence our true existence is being in his thoughts well that's the best way of understanding it and appreciating it given our present um, situation of being how do we gain that realization that our whole existence is because of his lovely way of thinking of us well first of all to know that that is what we value and in a, some sort of rationalization way we can say because if that is the case then he is utterly in control utterly good and we can abide in or um, take comfort in that knowledge that understanding 
that therefore every circumstance we might think we are finding ourselves in is only because of his thoughts and that we are in a relationship with him where our thoughts and his thoughts are perfect are in harmony you see it's that blessed assurance Uh, in the hymn it was blessed assurance Jesus is mine and what I think I mean by that is blessed assurance our Heavenly Father and us all of us are one and that we can be in full realization of that oneness. It might seem rather strange, but it occurs to me that something so cold in a way, like the practice of a triangular breathing, as I call it, Kriya Yoga, um, well, my understanding of it, um, amazingly achieves just that. It calms your whole being. That you become aware of a oneness. And it's sort of something that comes on you. Um, the true comfort of a friend is not somehow in the thoughts you have of that person, but in the effect of their being and your being, being one. being ever together, an assurance of their kindness. I, coming back to religion, it's, it's that simple thing. We need the assurance of his ever-present kindness. Now, I've said looking on whatsoever is good and lovely moves us towards that because we become aware of the, if you like, the intensity or the peaks of such, the lovely coincidences in the day, the lovely things that he brings together that are so beneficial to us. The constant awareness of these things builds that assurance. Perhaps it seems very slow at times, you know, I mean, I just laid here first on waking, and I thought, oh no, before I do the, 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 the breathing, the triangular breathing, I'll, I'll, um, I'll just list his goodness to me in, in yesterday. I'll list, uh, I don't know if I thought, ten things. And I got well over twenty. And then I thought, oh, I've, I've got them all, so to speak, knowing I hadn't sort of thing, but, you know. And then a few minutes later, a few more suddenly rushed to me, another episode in yesterday's day. It's, um... It's the practice of the presence of God. You know, Brother Andrew, was it? The monk who just worked in the kitchen, he didn't have any other uh, great role in the monastery. He wasn't abbot or something, you know. He just worked in the kitchen. But he practiced the presence of God. I think that's our way of practicing the presence, appreciating the goodness as unto him. 
of him. That our love grows and can I say it sounds strange but that he can be with us no matter where our mind our mind never wanders from our awareness of him you know you think of your worst dreams if you're really thinking of God in those dreams well you don't and if you did that awareness of him You'd never have wandered into the dreams. I, I had a couple of nights ago a, a series of frustration dreams and I woke being concerned at these and I mean they weren't horror dreams but they were frustration. And I thought yes it's because you'd had frustration in putting those seven miracles of John in the recordings together. You, you had a a difficult, you, you, at some point you lost your way, Marshall, and things were not in the right order, and I couldn't recognize easily what I'd done. I didn't have a, an overview that was holding it all together. And I, I realized that's why I had the dreams. And if I'd have had the assurance of God with me that I was it was all coming together right. The frustration wouldn't have been there, the concern, if you like, the stress, and it wouldn't have manifested in the dreams. That's my understanding of it. So it is practice. I mean, I'm still alive for a reason. It's not that... Um, Oh, everything's done, Marshall, and you're in, you know you're perfectly ready for the kingdom of heaven. I mean, well, I'm in it now, but I mean that you're perfectly ready to ascend to the heavenly house forever, never to return to this sort of world of uncertainty, physical world, matter, and so on. No, you're here because um, you're not there yet, Marshall. Not, not, not. You know, you're not some avatar that's <laughs> graciously staying for the benefit of all. You're here because you need it, mate. Yes. Ah. Oh. Thank you, Dad. So I'm saying, aren't I? We need to draw nigh to him. We need to practice the presence of God. I do it through the um, triangular breathing. I do it through the recordings. And I commend it and do it through the practice of thanking him. The great thing about thanking him for the bad things as well as the good. Well, you've always got good or bad things, even if it's monotony, you could thank him for that. Do you see? Extend your boundaries, your borders. Don't just practice thanking him for the good things. Thank him for the things that have become mundane, but really are very good. Where would you be without the use of your hands? Your ability to breathe. The meals you eat. The air you breathe. You can extend your repertoire of points of contact with God. And even if things are terrible, and, and it's the terrible that's dominating you, use it. Thank God for it. What a wonderful opportunity to trust Him. Not to be missed. And if you do, you bring God into it. 
you could bring God into your nightmares, they would not be nightmares. They would melt away. How much more is your existence here in the physical world? Everything he holds in his mind. You bring him into it and you start to see how much of a blessing a thing is. Or it vanishes miraculously as you think and say, and is. Because you come into his thoughts. And everything's changed accordingly. You have this sovereignty. I don't mean as some masterful uh, being. I mean as a child of a parent. You cry, the parent comes, because you are their child, and they are your parent, and you know it, that's why you cry, there's no point in crying otherwise, there's nobody to hear, there's no, no thought of someone there to hear. You know, cry out, you cry out thanks or concern. But even if it's because of terrible, fearful concern, it's because you brought him into it. I'll cry to God and perhaps God will answer me. Do you see your mind is now on God? You have the solution in the very situation that's frightening you because it drives you to God and God awareness in the situation changes everything. Your awareness of God is comfort, not the fearful concern of the dream. You've changed the dream. You've changed what your mind is now making. You've become sovereign through your trust in the possibility of God. In your being one that values God. The rescuer. You value him at your time of crisis. How wonderful. You are blessed. You are rescued. Thank you, Dad. It occurs to me that we practice uh, the presence of God in different ways. Brother Andrew, it was um, in the kitchen and what he was doing always. Not quite sure how he was thinking of it. He could read the book. Um, I might do it by listening, by thanking God for everything in the day, yesterday, or, or this day already, so to speak. You might be like St. Paul, who pray without ceasing. Just talking to God. You might do it like Merlin Carruthers, um, praising him for everything. Um, thanking God for the difficulties. If your life's full of difficulties, good. Thank him for every difficulty. Because every time you thank him for it, you bring him into the presence of your mind you re-establish the relationship. It's the relationship you want. I mean, can I heroically say, it's not the crisis that matters. It's that you brought him into your mind again. That's the great blessing. To always have God in mind. 
the practice of the presence of God. You might do it by Kriya Yoga. You visualize, you know, the spirit, his, his presence coming into your very body, your spinal column, from the bottom to the top as you breathe in, hold, focused uh, where you concentrate, you know, where you knit your eyebrows, focused at that point. And you hold for a period of time and then you breathe out for the same period of time and then on to the next breath. Do you see, it's yet another way of bringing the presence of God to mind. To mind is everything. If I'm constantly on your mind, goodness, I know I matter to you. That you're thinking of me, that you're focusing on me and I'm important to you. You have a link with God, you see, when you do it. There's no need for you to sit there pining. Think of God and you're not pining, you're not alone. You've brought your understanding of him into the dream whether that dream is a dream or dream is reality. You brought his presence into it. That changes everything. <laughs> to have an almighty God that loves you in any situation is going to make it vanish like the morning mist in the warmth of the morning sun. I see your face in every sunrise. The colours of the morning are inside your eyes. The world awakens in the light of your day. I look up to the sky and say, You're beautiful. And then the song goes, Oh, 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 oh. Um, not because I sing wonderfully, but that you might know the tune. I'm going to sing it to you now. Um, I can't do it very loudly because I'm in a house. I don't want to communicate with other people in the house at the minute. <laughs> Where are we? Um, I see your face in every sunrise. The colours of the morning are inside your eyes. The world awakens in the light of your day. I look up to the sky and say, you're beautiful. Oh, 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 oh. 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 oh. You're beautiful. Let us sing endlessly and uh, you'll get the message. <laughs> Um, and uh, if you really want to get the tune properly, uh, you could look it up on YouTube, couldn't you? I see your face in every sunrise. Lyrics. That's all you need to say on Google, isn't it? Just say, I see your face in every sunrise. Lyrics. And it just bangs up on the screen. Do you see that's what you do too when you, you communicate with God? Every time you think of him, it's a case of, I see your face in this situation. And the colours of the morning, that means the loveliness of you, floods the situation. Be it the most abominable, frightening curse. It's transformed, because it's all just thought. It's just that you were wandering in a wilderness, in a jungle in a dangerous place, the place of good and evil. But you brought your mind back to God. So now it's with God, not the jungle at all. The 
está plenos. Bless you. And you are blessed. Thank you, Dad. Should I say that um, when I say to know that he's everything to us, I mean, you know, it's not the beautiful woman that you need. It's not the wonderful man that you need. It's not the dog that you need, or the house, or the car, or the magnificent job, or the wonderful travelling, or the tremendous experience in some foreign land, or the exhilaration of, you know, falling off a cliff with a parachute. That's not what you need. You need the fullness, the comprehensiveness, and the depth of God. That's what you truly need. The being one with this fantastic being, all powerful, all loving, all blessing. That's what you truly need. The rest is just wisps of ideas, fantasies, gossamer, intangible nothings that just vanish away. You need the eternity the goodness of God, by definition, for goodness sake, surely you can realize that. And now, from the very fact that you are listening to me now, you have come to realize that. And it also means, because you are with me now, that you know the way. You see, this is life eternal, to know thee, the only true God, and the way. Jesus Christ, in that sent. The story tells you the way. What greater miracle could there possibly be? By definition. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you, Dad. And so we are back to the beginning of this recording. Come with me. Bless you. And you are blessed. Thank you, Dad. Look, I know this recording's half an hour now, it's quite long. But I want to give an example, and I hope it's an example I can give, because it's such a good one. I was helping uh, this family, huge family. They, uh, uh, well, they, they live in chaos. And they're moving house. And uh, I was helping... And um, there were two things they could not find in the chaos of moving. Um, one was the keys to the house that they were leaving. And there was a penalty if you don't return the keys of several thousand dollars, which is a lot of money at present situation in New Zealand. And... Um, the other was a, um, like a small purse, no, a small handbag or a large purse, a wallet, leather apparently, and of dark blue, which has some words written on it, S something or other. And um, they held the necessary passports for the lady and one of the daughters to be travelling with the other four children the following day, 
which would have been today. And without, of course, that passport, they could not be travelling with them. So both these things were very important to find, and there was no way, with all the best will in the world, <laughs> that the couple and the helpers, if not the children, <laughs> but <laughs> it just couldn't locate it. Couldn't locate the keys, couldn't locate the um, the the purse, the wallet, and of course it didn't help him that we who were not the couple didn't know what the actual thing really looked like, only from their description, which was not accurate, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Well, it became so important that um, really all of us had stopped doing the cleaning up and the clearing and because we got obsessed with trying to find these two items, the keys and the um, wallet with the passports in. Point I, I said to um, the head of the house, <laughs> my friend, I said, um, Are you sure it's not in a car? I don't mean I knew I had some great enlightenment here. I just thought, you know, sure they're not in a car, especially the wallet, not the keys. We didn't think the keys would be in the car. We were convinced the keys were unquestionably in the house, but the rest of family was convinced the wallet was in the house too. At some point I came to my senses. <laughs> um, I was sitting and having a break from all the searching now and um, I thought why aren't you thanking God for this Marshall? Oh, oh yes, okay. <laughs> so thank you. Heavenly Father, that we can't find the keys nor the passport wallet. Thank you, Lord. Well, I didn't work too hard at it. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> thanking God, but I just, right. You know, in some way it's going to be for the best. Well, would you believe it, the, um, one of the oldest sons who, uh, <laughs> You can't always communicate too clearly with him. His dad says to him, you know, where do you, where do you think it is? Oh yeah, it's over here on the edge, you believe it. At some earlier point, and I expect all of us had searched the top of that surface, which was littered with stuff, of course, in the kitchen. And it was right in the corner with the keys. Wow. Thank you, Lord. What about the wallet? Well, this kept on and on. And then at one point, my friend, head of the house, <laughs> was on the phone to someone and I didn't know who. And they said to him, Oh, yes, yeah, she left the wallet in the car. We've got it. I thought, this is good news. No, it wasn't. <laughs> well, that, from that point of view, it wasn't. <laughs> where they've got it was where they live, which was five hours' drive in the wrong direction from Auckland Airport, from Hamilton. It was way down in, oh, somewhere near Lake Napier. I, I don't know. I can't remember the name of the place. Yeah. <laughs> so she could not travel on the morrow, which is today. <laughs> and uh, she, she, my friend's wife, wasn't in the house at this point. She was in the house they're moving into. And uh, I'm 
understand she was upset, crying. But my friend, ah, good chap, he's concerned, of course, his wife's crying, but not too concerned. He has the confidence of God. Well, he says, perhaps it's for the best. It's cost a bit but, um, in cash because they'd spent money updating the passports and everything else, you know. But, um, well, perhaps it wasn't a good idea to book a holiday in Australia the day following the final date of having supposedly to have moved everything. So he was uh, in good harmony and understanding, wasn't he? And he was happy in himself. And I was too. Because we both felt this to be the case. Thank you, Dad. Do you see, there's a practice here that I have been involved in and he not in the same way, of course, but but in, a, in an earnest way also, you see, I was formally thanking God for the difficulty of not finding these things. We found the th essential, the keys, which meant a difference of a few thousand to the family. And we didn't find the passport, which meant she couldn't travel today, which meant she will continue to help her hubby clear the house, my friend in the coming week, and I can help them, of course. Isn't that just lovely? Do you see the practice? Whatever your practice is, mine's thanking God. My friend's practice is to be thinking, well, perhaps it wouldn't be too bad if she can't travel tomorrow. This was before we even knew where the wallet was. He was thinking, of course, well, I'd like her company and perhaps it wasn't a good idea to book a holiday directly so soon after moving. Just concentrate on the moving, that's what God's given us. Isn't that lovely? So we have a practice. Yours might be to worship, to sing. Perhaps you sing around the house, or in the garden, or wherever. Perhaps it's to walk by the river, or by the Essex Marsh, as I used to do, out on the Nays where I lived, in Essex, England. Or it might have been, whatever your practice is, curl up in the library somewhere reading scripture or, or something uplifting. Mine in the very beginning was, would you believe it, to read Plato in the reference library in South End on Sea. Don't think the building's there now, or it's used for something else perhaps. And uh, I'd sit up there in this old Dickensian type reference library, reading for hours, go out into the street and it was like I was in a strange world, not the one I'd been reading in. I didn't know that I knew God then, but his presence was with me, wasn't it? I was being transformed by his grace and his goodness. I was a young man, full of ideas, full of philosophy. I'd found something ancient and interesting. Isn't it astonishing? I now find that the ancient writings were the very foundation on which this religion that I've gone through and out the other end of was based on and why. How fantastic. My 
life's just been a long revelation. <laughs> I mean, to me, I don't know how much of a revelation I may have been to others, but a blessing at times, of course, as was my want and purpose and joy by the grace of God. Thank you, Dad. Love you the bits. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. <laughs>